All right, recording this. We're starting, this is where we began. This is for Cammie here. So absorption, these are the 11 basic functions that cells perform. Absorption, transport of dissolved substances into cells. Digestion, the breakdown of dissolved substances. Respiration, the breakdown of food molecules with a release of energy. That's what we're gonna spend a lot of time on next week in 6B, and that's the thing that's so difficult, respiration. Biosynthesis, synthesis means to put together. Bio means living things. So producing larger molecules from smaller ones. So there's four of our 11 things. Except for biosynthesis, I'm sure all the other words you've heard of before. They're not new words. All right, our next group. You ready? Three methods that cells eliminate substances. So ex excretion, to excrete, the removal of solid waste materials. We have the word in there, soluble. These are things that dissolve. Egestion, removal of non-soluble waste materials. And secretion, the release of biosynthesized substances. It's not wastes, but remember we're biosynthesis. That's our, our first group of words there. If the cells are making something, they're making something to use, possibly by other cells. So they will export it to other cells to use. A really good example is if, if a organ is making a hormone, it'll secrete that hormone into the bloodstream and the bloodstream will take it to the body where it's needed. Okay, so for instance, the pancreas releases, produces and then releases insulin to the rest of the body. So that's three more. We have four more? I know, I'm sorry, so much to write. I wish they had all the written part and all you had to write was the word. That matched with it. And if I'm going too fast, if I need to come back to these at the end, I can't. All right, this one's under just other important functions. Homeostasis, that's maintaining the normal. All right, maintaining the normal. Reproduction, producing more cells. Irritability, sensing and responding to change. We know that's one of the criteria for living things. And movement, also a criteria, right? It's sensing and moving, right? Movement of cells or movement of components within the cell. And I believe that's all of our 11, yes? Mm -hmm.
Chris, you lost your book? Just lost yes. one? Gone? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I'll look around and see if I have one. If I have an extra one, I might have an extra one, but it won't have any page numbers. I don't know if I have one or not. I might. I think I do, actually. Okay, are we ready? What do you have on that? You have a big space at the bottom of your page there? Yes. Okay. Oh, You're going to be doing some drawing here. Okay. All right, I'll come back to this if I need to. Here's our summary of the 11 things. Absorption, digestion, respiration, biosynthesis, excretion, egestion, secretion, homeostasis, reproduction, movement, and irritability. All right, so these are the functions that cells undergo to maintain that homeostasis. That's weird that that's part of it because homeostasis is what's trying to be, it's doing all these things to maintain that. Um, all right, so we're going to be looking at cell structure now. We're looking at uh, cells more closely. We're gonna, that's what we're going to be looking at on the scope today. But you're going to do some drawing right now. All right, so there's a place in your lab manual for these. You're going to have one side for animal cell and one side for plant cell. And I have some colored pencils if you want them, if you have your own, if you want to use those. You don't have to use colored pencils. It just might be nice uh, and easier to keep things straight. Okay, so here's how you're going to start with your animal cell. So on the left side there, you're going to start with a big circle. Make your circle nice and big, please. Fill up that whole space down there. All right, so you have a big circle. We typically draw an animal cell as a circle. The reason we do that is to remind us that it does not have a cell wall, but it does have a cell membrane. So it's surrounded by a cell membrane, also known as a plasma membrane. If you want to label that, plasma membrane, cell membrane. The next thing you're going to do is draw a circle in the middle. The circle in the middle is the nucleus. What I want you to remember about the nucleus is that inside the nucleus is where the DNA is. All right, and it stays there. We'll see a process where something comes out of the nucleus, but it's not the DNA. Something else comes out of the nucleus. All right, and then you can see this sort of, you know, windy thing coming off of the nucleus there. You can draw that as sort of spaghetti noodles coming off there. That is called the endoplasmic reticulum. You can label it ER. ER for endoplasmic reticulum. Some of them have these little dots on them. Called the, and we call that rough ER. Some of them don't have the little dots on there. We call that smooth ER. Those little dots, by the way, are called ribosomes. You need to have ribosomes in there. You can also have some free ribosomes just kind of hanging around inside the cell if you want. I don't see it on here. Oh, yeah, there's one down here at the bottom hanging down by itself. Okay. Ribosomes have a very important function. That's where proteins are. They help to make proteins. We'll have a whole module about that. I think that's in 7, module 7. All right, so the endoplasmic reticulum is kind of hanging off of the nucleus right there. If you're interested in putting in the middle here the nucleolus, you can do that if you like. But nucleus, nucleolus is where ribosomes are made. I don't really care so much about that right this minute. All right, the next one, um, how about the Golgi apparatus? It looks like a stack of pancakes here at the top. The Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus, it uh, synthesizes things. We're going to go through each one of these one by one, uh, but right now you're just drawing them. The mitochondria, you all know what the mitochondria does. What does it do? Powerhouse of the cell, thank you. Yes, it makes energy in the form of ATP. We will look into that, the details of that next week, which is why next week will be so difficult. That's in the mitochondria right here. Notice, depending on the cell, whatever kind of cell it is, will, will, uh, some will have more mitochondria than others. If it's a cell that's very, very active, for instance, a nerve cell, it needs lots of mitochondria because a lot of action going on there. Um, all right, those are the main things. Next, we could say uh, this is called a lysosome. If you think of the cell like a city, you could think of the nucleus as being city hall. Uh, you could think of the Golgi apparatus as the um, whatever the city makes to send out. You could think of the mitochondria as power uh, company of the city. Um, I can't. I don't have a thing for the endoplasma we're taking them. But the lysosome over here would be the trash, taking the trash out. Lysosome, it's going to lyse something. It's going to break something up into smaller pieces and get rid of it. 
All right, we have these things here called centrioles. Look a little bit like a three-dimensional flower kind of a thing right here. The centrioles are, are poorly understood, but they, we think they have something to do with cell division. They tend to go toward the end of the cell during cell division, and they line up these spaghetti-looking things here called microtubules. So both of those have to do with cell division. And if I missed anything? Oh, I didn't tell you about the cytoplasm. The whole thing is like a jello salad. Inside is cytoplasm, holding everything together. All right, so those are your main things. And then next to it on the other side of your page there, you're going to draw a plant cell. Okay, so with the plant cell, the way we start an animal cell with a circle, you're going to start a plant cell with like a rectangle, like a square rectangle, something like that. And you're just going to notice essentially the things that are different between the animal cell and the plant cell. Are you all ready? Yes, We're good? Okay. So now the plant cell, for one thing, it looks different because it's square. And that we always draw it square like that because we want to remember that it has a cell wall. Okay, so that's one of the main differences between animal cells and plant cells. It has a cell wall. Now, mind you, it also has a cell membrane called the plasma membrane. It has that too. All right, that's where the semi-permeability part comes in. But it also has this cell wall which gives it rigidity. It's rigid. Think about biting into a, a celery stalk, right? Crunch. It's very rigid because they have that cell uh, wall. Notice, notice the nucleus is kind of squished. So there's one of the big differences. So cell wall, this giant thing in the middle right here, that is called the large central vacuole. And it is full of water. It's full of water. Unless the plant has not been watered by you, because you're a bad plant keeper. Then it starts to get really wilted. That's because there's no water in the central vacuole. Remind me today I want to set up, I have some white carnations I want to set up for my third, grade, third graders tomorrow and I want y'all to set them up in some uh, food coloring and that's, I've let their vacuoles kind of wilt and so what's going to happen, they're going to fill up with liquid that's colored and it'll go into the flower and turn the white flower into a different colored flower, whatever we choose. All right, so what else is different? We have our nucleus with its DNA, we have our nucleolus in the middle, we have our smooth and rough e, uh, ER coming off of there. We have our Golgi apparatus, we have our mitochondria. All the same stuff, right? So what's different? Central vacuole, cell wall, and then notice these things right here. It looks a little bit like a mitochondria, but it's green. Animal cells don't have those. All right, those are chloroplasts. Chloroplasts contain chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is green. And it does what for the cell? Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. So if it's doing photosynthesis, which is making its own food, why does it need mitochondria? As a powerhouse, right? That's, yeah. So mitochondria is taking the food it makes and using respiration to, to uh, consume it. So plants do both. They make their own food and they eat their own food. So if I asked you what are the main differences between plant cells and animal cells, what would you say? Cell wall. And then the, the thing on the, the large central Large central vacuole and chloroplasts. chloroplasts. Yeah, chloroplasts. There is this weird thing right here called a starch frame called an amyloplast. Let's not worry about that right now. These crystal things, we're not going to worry about those either. Either rat pie crystal. Mm, we don't care about those right now. I just want to see when I say draw a typical animal cell, draw a typical plant cell. I want that animal cell to be round and I want that plant cell to be square, please. Okay? At the very least. Okay, so why, do, uh, why are cells so small? So it turns out that if we look at this little example over here, if I have one large cell versus these, how many are there? One, two, three, six, six, seven. How many are there? 27. Um, I actually have a lot more surface area in those small cells, in those 27 cells. I have a lot more surface exposed, 
All right, so the plasma membrane is where the action happens in the cell, taking stuff out, absorbing stuff in. And so the bigger the cell, the smaller the ratio between the uh, cytoplasm and the cell membrane. So therefore, we need cells to be small. All right, so that's why cells stay small. Um, the largest cell that I can think of is an ostrich egg. That's a large cell. Big old cell. Yeah. All right, so at this point, you can just listen. I don't think you have notes to write on this, do you? Does the next page say 6B? What does it say? OK, a place for us to draw our slides. OK, good. All right, so the cell wall, remember it's only in plants. Um, it has rigid structure outside certain cells. There are some bacteria, of course, we know about that that have them. But it's a pectin layer right here and a secondary layer. Cellulose could be in there. This is protection. It's permeable. It's, it's like got really large holes in it. So the, uh, the cell membrane is still semi-permeable on the plant cell as well. So things get through the cell wall pretty easily, but it gives it that structure right there. Our plasma membrane is a double layer of phospholipids that make up the outer membrane of the cell. I'll show you a picture in a minute. What's the function? It's semi-permeable. We know what that means. It allows certain substances uh, to enter and exit the cell. It's a phospholipid bilayer, which is an elegant design protecting the cell and regulating hydrophobic and hydrophilic substances. So I'll explain that to you by showing you the picture of it. So what we have is inside here, we have the, uh, the lipids on the inside because they are water, they don't like water. And then our outside right here is our phosphate molecule. Am I saying that right? Yeah, our phospholipid bilayer. So we see how we have the head and the tail and the head and the tail, and we make like this little sandwich in there. And in the middle of it, to get things in and out of it, we have some channel proteins, maybe some carrier proteins. Here's a protein molecule that allows things in and out, usually through some, something known as active transport. I think we'll talk about that next time. All right, and we'll look more deeply into this next time. So the cytoplasm is a jelly-like fluid inside the cells. It holds all the organelles in place. It also has ions in it. Uh, if there's an imbalance, it is constantly moving it ar around in a process called cytoplasmic streaming. I think I have a video of it. Um, and so it kind of think of it like this, a jello salad with all that stuff suspended in there. You know, all of our, our um, little organelles are suspended in our jello salad right there. All right. This is our video on cytoplasmic streaming. I This video shows cytoplasmic streaming in leaf cells. What we're looking at here are the cells of the parenchyma of a leaf. The dark green ovals inside the cells are chloroplasts. Notice how they stay towards the edges of the cells. That's because they're trying to gather light, and the best view of the light is going to be at the edge of the cells. To further maximize their exposure to light, cytoplasmic streaming causes the chloroplasts to travel around the cell. That way, no matter where light is shining brightest on the cell, the chloroplasts are exposed to it. All right, there it is, always moving around. Uh, the mitochondria is a small membrane-bound organelle with a specialized internal structure. You see this kind of, uh, I don't know, this, these layers on the inside, they're called cristae, and they're layered like that to increase surface area. We're gonna see that time and time again inside living uh, cells. The function, of course, is the powerhouse of the cell. It makes ATP, adenosine triphosphate. You can see that folded membrane in there called the matrix. Got the outer membrane, then the inner membrane. Something happens on the outer membrane, something else happens on the inner membrane. All right, there's a, it's got its own DNA, by the way. It's called mitochondrial DNA. It's pretty cool. Um, it uh, it's only comes from your mother, and that has to do with the fact that during the um, reproduction, uh, the mitochondrial DNA, all the mitochondria from the sperm are completely destroyed during the entrance into the egg cell, and therefore all the mitochondrial DNA comes from your mother, which is kind of interesting when you're doing a genetic study. We, can, we, can, uh, we call it the Eve gene, and you can follow it farther back and uh, find out about your genetics, where you came from. All right, I don't know what this video is, I can't remember. <laughs> Our body is made up of trillions of cells. They all require energy to function. This energy is created within our cells 
in the mitochondria. Here, food is converted into chemical energy called ATP. ATP is released by the mitochondria so cells can use it. Mitochondria consist of two membranes, an outer membrane separating it from the cytosol and an inner membrane surrounding the so-called matrix. The area between these membranes is called the intermembrane space. ATP is generated at the inner membrane of mitochondria by an efficient mechanism called oxidative phosphorylation involving several membrane protein complexes. Nutrients provide high energy electrons in the form of NADH, which are used by the protein complexes to pump protons from the matrix to the intermembrane space. This continuous pumping creates a proton gradient, where the positively charged protons are attracted to the more negative matrix. When the protons re-enter the matrix through the ATP synthase protein complex, they catalyze the production of ATP. Uh, this is a picture of some actual mitochondria, so notice how round they are. So I always draw them kind of in that jelly bean shape, but they're, they can be round sometimes, depending on what you're looking at. And this apparently is some of the protein that makes up that inner part of it right there. All right, the lysosome, they excrete enzymes. Uh, they are breaking down proteins and saccharides and getting rid of stuff. So they can release bacteria-killing enzymes as well, so they can help with the... Uh, um, taking care of the health of the cell. Notice here the plasma membrane, you can see over here on the left, you can see the bilayer right there. So the yellow balls are gonna be on the outside and the little green tails are going on the inside there. All right, the uh, ribosomes. So ribosomes are where proteins are made. We'll have a whole module about this one. They can be found freely floating in the cell or attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. So remember when they're attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, they're called the rough ER right there. All right, so their, what is their job? Their function is to manufacture protein. Here's our endoplasmic reticulum. It's a network of folded membranes. They have many tasks, mostly having to do with synthesis, making stuff. The smooth will support the nuclear material, making lipids and hormones. The rough will aid in protein synthesis that make, and transporting of those new proteins, so that makes sense. So you can see on this picture over here, the nucleus, and notice those giant holes, they're called nuclear pores. Those are holes that things can come in and out of the nucleus pretty freely. Um, and we'll see next week why they need to do that, or actually in two weeks why they need to do that. Plastids, these are found in um, plants. Uh, so leucoplasts, they store, uh, store starches and oils in them. So where are those? Right here, the white looking one, okay. And our chromoplasts have colors, so the chloroplast is one of those. All right. Here's uh, chloroplasts inside uh, cells of a plant. Notice they're not square, but they are rigid, right? They are geometric. Vacuoles and vesicles are central vacuole in plant cells. Well, you know this. It's going to um, have a lot of uh, water in it for fluid balance. It's called turgor pressure. Turgor pressure gives that, um, that nice crispness to a plant. We also have waste vacuoles that have waste that's gotten rid of, sort of like the lysosomes. Phagocytic vesicles, if the cell is engulfing something to bring it into the cell, it will hold on to it before it gets digested. And then similar vacuoles allow for penocytosis to secrete things. The Golgi apparatus makes it, it sends it to the edge of the cell, it sends it out. The Golgi bodies, looks like that stack of pancakes right there. Um, it is to uh, store proteins and lipids but also to make stuff. Yeah, it'll, it'll send them elsewhere. It'll, it'll uh, package these up and send them out via secretion and excretion. All right, that's what these little secretory vesicles are right here. They're sending that out. The nucleus, it's in the central, typically, you no, know, in the plant, moves over to the side a little bit like there. It has DNA. That's the main thing I want you to remember about the nucleus is that's where the DNA is and it stays all the time. Its function is reproduction of cells, cell, reprodu cell division. Uh, inside the nucleolus in the middle, some people pronounce it nucleolus, but it's nucleolus. That's where the ribosomes are made. The cytoskeleton, the microtubules, right here you can see the microtubules give sort of a structure right here. All right, kind of giving it a skeleton, if you will. Okay, we call it the cytoskeleton. 
Uh, they aid in the, in the shape. Also, if there's motility, if they need to move around for some reason, they hold the shape of the cell together. All right, so they're stretching. Look at our mitochondria in there being held together. Centrioles are special microtubules. Uh, they have something to do with cell division. We just know that they move around and become uh, active during cell division, so we figured there's something like that. All right, let's watch a little um, wrap-up of it here, summary. Cells are the smallest living units of an organism. All cells have three things in common, no matter what type of cell they are. All cells have a cell membrane, which separates the inside of the cell from its environment. Cytoplasm, which is a jelly-like fluid, and DNA, which is the cell's genetic material. There are two broad categories of cells. We need this. The first category is eukaryotic cells. They have organelles, which include the nucleus and other special parts. Eukaryotic cells are more advanced complex cells, such as those found in plants and animals. The second category is prokaryotic cells. They don't have a nucleus or membrane-enclosed organelles. They do have genetic material, but it's not contained within a nucleus. Prokaryotic cells are always one-celled or unicellular organisms, such as bacteria. So what are organelles? Organelle means little organ. Organelles are the specialized parts of a cell that have unique jobs to perform. Let's start with the nucleus, the control center of the cell. The nucleus contains DNA, or genetic material. DNA dictates what the cell is going to do and how it's going to do it. Chromatin is the tangled, spread out form of DNA found inside the nuclear membrane. When a cell is ready to divide, DNA condenses into structures known as chromosomes. The nucleus also contains a nucleolus, which is a structure where ribosomes are made. After ribosomes leave the nucleus, they will have the important job of synthesizing or making proteins. Outside the nucleus, the ribosomes and the rest of the organelles float around in cytoplasm, which is the jelly-like substance. Ribosomes may wander freely within the cytoplasm or attach to the endoplasmic reticulum, sometimes abbreviated as ER. There are two types of ER. Rough ER has ribosomes attached to it and smooth ER doesn't have ribosomes attached to it. The endoplasmic reticulum is a membrane-enclosed passageway for transporting materials, such as the proteins synthesized by ribosomes. Proteins and other materials emerge from the endoplasmic reticulum in small vesicles, where the Golgi apparatus, sometimes called the Golgi body, receives them. As proteins move through the Golgi body, they're customized into forms that the cell can use. The Golgi body does this by folding the proteins into usable shapes, or adding other materials onto them, such as lipids or carbohydrates. Vacuoles are sac-like structures that store different materials. Here, in this plant cell, the central vacuole stores water. Going back to the animal cell, you will see an organelle called a lysosome. Lysosomes are the garbage collectors that take in damaged or worn out cell parts. They are filled with enzymes that break down this cellular debris. The mitochondrion is an organelle that is the powerhouse for both animal and plant cells. 
during a process called cellular respiration, the mitochondria make ATP molecules that provide the energy for all of the cell's activities. Cells that need more energy have more mitochondria. Meanwhile, the cell maintains its shape through a cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton includes the thread-like microfilaments, which are made of protein, and microtubules, which are thin, hollow tubes. Some organisms, such as plants, that are photoautotrophic, meaning they capture sunlight for energy, have cells with an organelle called a chloroplast. The chloroplast is where photosynthesis happens. It's green because it has a green pigment called chlorophyll. Plant cells also have a cell wall outside of their cell membranes that shape, support, and protect the plant cell. Animal cells never have a cell wall. There are many other unique structures that only some cells have. Here are just a few. In humans, for example, the respiratory tract is lined with cells that have cilia. These are microscopic hair-like projections that can move in waves. This feature helps trap inhaled particles in the air and expels them when you cough. Another unique feature in some cells is flagella. Some bacteria have flagella. A flagellum is like a little tail that can help a cell move or propel itself. The only human cell that has a flagellum is a sperm cell. In summary, remember, eukaryotic cells are plant and animal cells with a nucleus and membrane-enclosed organelles. While prokaryotic cells are unicellular organisms without these things. All cells have a cell membrane, cytoplasm, and genetic material. And even though only plant cells have chloroplasts, both plant and animal cells have mitochondria. of that that is a place where you can go have an interactive look at the parts of the cell so let me know if you're interested um, equations you know these photosynthesis you know that c6h I mean c 6 co2 plus 6 h2o gives me c6h2o6 plus 6o2 we turn that around for respiration it's the other way right and then do y'all remember combustion that is fuel usually in the form of carbon cho with Oxygen gives me CO2 and H2O. So notice that if the fuel happens to be glucose, then this part is, is the same. Okay? All right, so it turns out when we are producing ATP, going through respiration, we are having a combustion reaction inside of our body. It's just a really gentle combustion reaction going on. All right, so this is the main part of your lab today. What you're going to do is you're going to make a slide. So look at your procedure for making your slide. You have a couple of things to do. You're at least making one slide. It's going to be the onion skin using um, iodine as your stain, okay? Um, I have an onion. I have some blades and some tweezers. I have the iodine. I did not bring y'all any gloves, so I hope you don't mind touching an onion. Uh, mm -hmm. So notice what you're going to do. You're going to peel a thin section. You know how the onion has that little thin skin that comes off? That's what you want, that really thin thing. You're going to put it on your slide. You're going to put a drop of iodine, you're going to cover it with a cover slip, and you're going to put it under the scope and take a look at it. The other thing you're definitely doing is you're going to be looking at some animal cells pre-made and some plant cells pre-made, and you're going to draw those somewhere in your book. Do you have a place for all that? Mm 